All right, all right, LDWMAC, this is your boy, The Coach, you're live, 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 and The Coach Show, The Coach Show Live. Okay, guys, um, salute to the brother, salute to my brother, Combo Breaker 99. Um, go subscribe to the channel. That's Combo Breaker 99, all one word. Uh, Combo Breaker 99 made a video about was cat, uh, cats and Chris Cyborg stalking cats in Ghana. Um, I'll put it to you like this, okay? This is something, I, I don't think they were stalking cats in Ghana. Matter of fact, I think they were purposely trying to make Kat Zingano have a mental breakdown, and they succeeded. Guys, this is nothing new, okay? This is something that Chris Cyborg, this is what they do, okay? This is what they do. They do this, okay? They do this over and over and over again to their opponents. And the fact that people hadn't really picked up on this, wow. Um, they, Chris Cyborg, will do a mental assault of a person before a fight, okay? You look at some of the examples. Like, you remember... When Chris Cyborg was supposed to fight Megan Anderson, right? The fight had really logically was getting signed. It was in the process. And Chris Cyborg and the team, they wanted to hurry up and, you know, make Megan make a decision. They want to put pressure on Megan Anderson. So Megan Anderson was on the Area Hawani show. And you got to know that Chris Cyborg, she's not the mastermind behind this kind of stuff. Chris Cyborg ain't a mastermind. She's just not. But her husband, fiance, Ray Elby, oh, He's the mastermind behind all this stuff. So, you know, they, they agreed and to have Ariel Hawaiian Ariel call Chris Cyborg while Megan Anderson was being interviewed. And man, it was genius because not only did they put Megan Anderson ass on the spot, right? They put her ass on the spot. And right then and there, she had it, you know, in front of the world. Okay, Megan Anderson literally was about to have a mental breakdown in front of the damn world. And Megan Anderson did, after that, have a mental breakdown, and that fight never happened. That fight never happened. Megan Anderson had so much anxiety, she didn't want to fight Chris Cyborg. And I don't even want to say anxiety anymore. Look, the woman was afraid. The woman was afraid. She wanted no parts of Chris Cyborg. Zero. She wanted zero parts. And she let the world be known. Megan had been avoiding that fight and avoiding that fight and talking that fight and not wanting that fight and talking the fight down. For a long damn time, Megan Anderson was doing that. And, and everybody named Mama, we knew that Megan Anderson wanted no parts of Cyborg, okay? And when Megan Anderson, you know, pulled out of the fight, <laughs> we know the truth. The girl had a mental breakdown. Like, the girl damn near went crazy, y'all. I'm telling y'all the truth. This is what happened. Megan Anderson damn near went crazy at the thought of having to fight Chris Cyborg. She didn't want to do it. She, In her mind, she didn't think she was ready to fight Chris Cyborg. This, this, this not new. Or when Jermaine, you remember when Jermaine Durandame became the women's inaugural champion? Okay, now I'm going to tell you, this was slick. Uh, they went to the UFC retreat. And I think that's the year when Chris Cyborg slapped the hell out of Angela Magallion. Uh They went to that UFC retreat. And I know Jermaine Durandame did a face-off with Chris Cyborg. And I think Megan Anderson did one too. And that's another thing. <laughs> they did that face-off. And that face-off really gave Megan anxiety. Like, Megan wanted no parts. Neither did Jermaine Durand to me. And y'all can say Jermaine had a good reason because Jermaine was talking about, well, Chris, you know, she didn't want to fight nobody that's been on steroids. I'm like, girl, that was like a decade ago. You scared. Like, literally. Okay, that's what Jermaine said. But it was ingenious because Chris and them, when they did that face-off with Jermaine, they did it. They did it on purpose to try to help, you know, to push this fight. So Jermaine still avoided Chris Cyborg, would not fight Chris Cyborg, and they stripped Jermaine Durandame of the of the featherweight belt. They stripped her the belt because she refused to fight Chris Cyborg. Um, but it's the way that they get into their opponents' heads. They do this, okay? Or you remember when um, it didn't? Boy, I mean, me, me and Anderson might had a mental breakdown. Jermaine Durandame said, "Hell no, I'm not fighting her. She been on steroids." I'm not going to fight her. I ain't fighting nobody. Like, it worked. Like, well, it worked. Now, she didn't ever get them fights. But the mental, you know, the mental warfare worked. Like, they were so much, like, they were, Chris Cyborg was in their head so much. They didn't want to fight, folks. That's just what it is. Say what you want to say. You can say they weren't scared. These people was terrified. They ain't want no parts. Okay? And then you remember when, um, when Chris Cyborg was fighting Amanda Nunes. Remember the build up to that fight? When she came out with them videos calling uh, Amanda Nunez a creante. A creante. Like she was calling uh, Amanda Nunez a creante. 
Remember? And then they, you know, I even put it on my channel once. But, um, yeah, they did all that. Now, it didn't work on Amanda Nunes. It didn't work. Um, because Amanda Nunes is a pure savage. Like, she just don't care. And when they asked Amanda, hey, what do you think about all the, uh, what do you think about all the internet stuff that Chris is doing to you? And Amanda was like, you know I know, I know, I even know. What what she do? You know I train because I want more money for me, more money for Chris, more money for everybody. You know, like uh, Amanda Nunez is oblivious, and it's like Amanda Nunez is a straight savage. The woman don't care. Amanda ain't care. Amanda just want her money and just want to run around there and chase Nina Ansrock around the house in a pair of drawers. That that's all Amanda want to do. That's it. Okay, so if it's not part of her world, Amanda don't really care. She don't give attention to it. And of course, Nunez went in there. And of course, we know we know the story on that. She knocked out, uh, knocked Chris Cyborg out. But folks, that's just what it is. She went in there. And she knocked out Chris Cyborg. So guys, don't. I mean, so her stealing Cat Zingano domain name. I don't think she was stalking her. This is this is what they do. This is what they do. They try to get into the opponent's head. And you got to say, Chris Cyborg didn't think to come up with this. Now, Chris Cyborg supported it, and, you know, she supported it, of course. But this is all Ray Elby, okay? To steal somebody's domain name, boy, that's intense as hell, but I got to tell y'all, it's damn in jeans because did it work? I'm sure it did. Was Kat Zingano visibly upset about it? Of course she was. And Kat Zingano brought that energy into the fight, and now you got Kat Zingano laying down on, on, a, on a, you know, on the mat, on the canvas, in an OnlyFans pose. <laughs> Kat Zingano is in her OnlyFans pose right now, getting her ass whooped. And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. She's in her OnlyFans pose, getting her ass whooped. Um, so it worked. She brought that into the octagon. She brought out all that damn emotion. And all that emotion got her beat up. So yeah, it worked. This is what they do. Okay, this is what they do. But still somebody domain name. And then Chris was acting like she didn't know why Kat was mad. Uh, she knew why Cat was mad, but Chris, Chris, Chris from Brazil, she don't care. <laughs> they probably went, man. I'm gonna tell you what they did. When they probably got out of the octagon, when they got out of the octagon, probably <laughs> they went home, and laughed about it, man. Chris Starboy can put on a good show. She can act real good, but they they went <laughs> and probably laughed about it. But guys, this is what they do. You remember when she was fighting Felicia Spencer? She fell out of a shopping cart. She mysteriously fell out this damn shopping cart. This is what they do. This is what they do. It's, 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 I mean, you got to admit it works. It's mental warfare because you're going into a fight and the person that you're fighting, that damn person can end you. That person could kill you. OK, that person can take away your livelihood, all of that. So you want to get every single advantage that you can. OK, now I'm going to tell you, it backfired. It really it backfired when. um it backfired when Chris Cyborg, they put out that videotape with Dana White. Remember, uh, she was talking to Dana White, but Chris Cyborg had an edited videotape. And it was, on that tape, it was stuff that Dana White wasn't even saying. Okay, it was stuff that Dana White wasn't saying. And, you know, Dana White got mad. And now I understand, I get Dana on that one, okay? I get it, and I know that Dana White's a tough dude. But if somebody can doctor a videotape to make you say stuff you didn't say, that's dangerous. Because... They could have said, you know, they could have had Dana White saying anything. They could have had him saying, you know, he planned a plot to murder somebody. Or they could have had him saying that just anything like bad. That's dangerous. And that's the kind of thing, you know, where from Dana White, if somebody do that to me, I'm suing them. Like, you put me on a videotape, me saying something different, something that I didn't say, that, that you know, defames my character. Okay, and really what Ray Elby and Chris Cyborg did, that's defamation of character. Like, they defamed that man's character. And that's why Dana White got her ass about that UFC fast. He got out of there as quick as he could. Because if they can do that, man, could you imagine? They can do anything. And Dana White, he's got a very powerful position, man. He's worth a billion dollars. And you don't want to mess up your livelihood, okay? You don't want to mess that up because of somebody doctoring tapes. And they got the ability to do that. So Dana, they had to get him out of there. They had to get Chris up out of there, and that's what they used to get out. That tape. And I don't blame Dana. I would have been pissed, too. I would have been mad because I didn't say what you're telling me that I said on this tape. I didn't say that. 
And Dana White lucky, man, that there were other copies of the tape floating around with the, what he actually did say. OK, like they're lucky because if if there were no other tapes, man, they, they could have did whatever. But it backfires. But this is stuff that they do. It's not Chris Cyborg who the mastermind. Now, Chris Cyborg is approving it. Of course, she knows what's going on, but it's her husband, Ray Elby. Like, you know, it's backfired. At that time, that that backfired on Chris Cyborg when she did that with Dana White. It backfired when they pulled the stunt with Megan Anderson. It backfired when they pulled the stunt with Jermaine Durandamay. It backfired. It didn't do anything because Amanda Nunes didn't give it rise. Amanda just didn't give a fuck about it. She just said, I'm going to do what I do. But it worked for Kat Zingano. Definitely worked for Kat Zingano. I mean, man, it's crazy. But this this is what Cyborg do. So anytime they have a fight, you really go to Chris Cyborg's social media and they're going to promote the hell out of the fight. Okay, I don't know what Kat Zingano mad for. Chris Cyborg promoted the damn fight. Promoted the fight. Like, put pretty much said this is going to be a tough fight. She was telling people that because she had to, in, in WWE, they call it putting a person over. She had to put you over. Because if not, people just going to think that she going in there to beat you down at a one-sided beat down. So Chris Cyborg had to give this this impression that you're this formidable fighter. Like, she had to do it. Well, you know, it's going to affect her bottom line, her money. <laughs> But man, man, you know, uh, congrats to Chris Cyborg, and <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Um, you know, I don't know what Cat was thinking, and I don't know what Chris was thinking, thinking that Cat would want to hug you. Nah, if he did all that, you stole the domain. I think that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> but it worked. I mean, Chris Cyborg ended up victorious, first round knockout. So, I mean, what you got to say, it worked. It might be not be a practice that, you know, to me, it's it's a fair practice. It might not be fair, but nothing is fair. Nothing should be fair in a fight. This is a fight. It's a fight game. You got to get ahead. You got to do what you got to do to put food on the table. It's the fight game. Yeah, but man, 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 man. You know, I don't know why people, and I don't know where everybody's so uptight with Chris. This is what they do. They've always done this since the beginning of time, since they started fighting. They always do. The difference is when Chris Cyborg, they was calling out Kat Zingano, Kat Zingano was like, yeah, let's fight. See, Kat Zingano wasn't ducking no smoke. And Kat Zingano said, I've always wanted to fight Chris Cyborg. Or Marlos Conan, you know, back in the day. Man, look, Marlos Conan said, I see a way I can beat Chris Cyborg. She would say that, you know, and it's like they really wanted that true smoke. They, they wanted to fight. See, these were people back then that they didn't care who you were. They wanted to fight you. They didn't care about the antics that Chris Cyborg did. It, 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 it's her antics. <laughs> Kat Zingano said, nope, we ain't friends. And you know what? Okay. You got to respect her. If Kat don't want to be your friend, she ain't got to be your friend. But that's what it is, okay? She wasn't stalking Kat Zingano. Chris uh, Cyborg was thinking about the money, the bag. And the more, like, you build a storyline, okay? You have to build a good storyline with two fighters now. And... The, the better the storyline is, like, you got two people that don't like each other, okay? Never liked each other. That's the storyline. Well, you can stand to make more money. Because at the end of the day, it is all about the money. <laughs>